Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing the three blind mice build off the welcome back to the 50s challenge hosted by three blind mice. Okay so today we're going to be doing a corgi Ford Thunderbird 1956 and as you can see on the turntable she's um she's only a small one not much to it this one really is just a quick simple build it's just my first entry into the three blind mice so we're going to kick off with this one so let's get on the bench okay so the, as i say there's not much to this it's a simple strip down i've already pre-drilled it and it's ready to go so we get straight into it so we just pop off the base and they've got the chrome with the bumpers front and back and the interior on this one's a bit strange it's got like the uh, the engine bay is part of the interior they sort of overlap but they're in two separate pieces i thought i broke it to be honest but that's the way it comes out and obviously the little uh, transparency there the hood or the bonnet lifts up the opposite direction to a normal regular one and i know there's a name for it but for the life now i can't think of what it's called but anyway the bonnet lifts up so we just pop that out Without um, breaking the, the brackets. And there we go. So that's all our bits. And it's only a small one, so I'm not going to bother putting it in caustic today, so I'll just dip it in the, um, the regular paint stripper. Let's say that the base just needs cleaning up there, we we'll sort the wheels out. Give it a quick dunk. I've already put screws in and tapped it and what have you. So I've put the screws in already just to stop any of the gunk going in the holes. Get our little base ready for it to um, sit on while the paint stripper does what it's doing. So yeah, while well, this is doing what it's doing, and we're just going to dump the bonnet in. Um, take this opportunity to thank the guys for the open invitation for the build-off for this uh, Welcome Back to the 50s challenge. So please do take your time to go and check out all the other builders and some cracking builds out there. And if you're not already subbed to this channel or theirs, then please do. It helps us all out and we all appreciate it. So leave us all a like, comment, subscribe to everybody you can. And let's grow this community into something bigger than what it already is. So anyway, back to the video. So we're just gonna leave this to sit now for like 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna cover it up and it, um, the fumes help strip the paint as you can see. There we go, it's all ready to come off really all blistered up. So it's just gonna be a case of getting the toothbrush on it and peeling back the paint, giving it a good wash, hot soapy water to neutralize any of the, um, the acids and whatnot. And then we'll uh, get, get on to burnishing it, ready for paint. So we're not going to be doing nothing fancy to it today. We're just going to like clean it up and change the colour. Make it look presentable. I missed out on another build, to be honest. I've done it in 1956 or 57 um, Chevy. A, uh, I think it was the Bel Air. And I, I released it about a fortnight ago. So I've just missed out on it. I should have kept it for this one, but... I say it's there on my channel on this channel so if you want to go and check that out then by all means go and check that one out that's not that's a nice build as well it's worth a watch to be fair so yeah i enjoyed doing that one so i was quite gutted i missed the date the deadline with it but as i say i, I found these um this little thunderbird so i thought i'll give this a go and it gets another one restored at the same time as well so it's not all bad
so we just carry on scrubbing this paint off. It seems strange as well because I've been doing the um, Super King size and King size and whatnot. So coming back to like a Corgi Juniors, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like rolling back a, a good few scales down, you know. So getting used to doing the tiny models again, it, it, it was a bit of a, a bit of an outlet. So I'm just going to pop a glove on now because um, I don't fancy this gunk burning into my skin. So let's give it a quick dip, neutralise it. And I can get hold of it properly now and give it a bloody good screw with the brush. Without the fear of it falling off them tongues. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Yeah, I've watched a few um, a few of the other channels who've done this build as well, and there's, there's some lovely builders out there. They've, got, they've done some really nice builds. So make sure you do check them out, guys. So if you're unsure how to actually do that, just type in the, uh, the search, Three Blind Mice, Back to the 50s Challenge, and a whole host of videos will pop up your way for your entertainment. So make sure you give everybody a like and a, a subscribe. It really does help and everybody does appreciate it. So let's get the paint off this little bonnet or hood if you're from over the pond. That's that little rinse. Gloves off, everything cleaned away, and let's get on to scrubbing the rest of the car. So we do the um, the engine bay, the, the interior. As again, again, it's just hot soapy water I'm scrubbing on here. It's just out of shot there, but like I have got hot soapy water there. <laughs> there we are, it's just down here. For a small car, I tell you what, it had some bloody dirt on it. I don't know what it was, it was some sort of like, like greasy sand, muck and jizz and whatever, it was all kinds of crap in there. Let's give another little dip in the water. As you can see, the, the main body did actually come up quite clean after I, um, I rinsed it off and wiped it off there, so we'll get that burnished up in a second. There we are, see? It didn't come too bad, this actually. Nice little bit of detail as well, to be fair. Just got to get that little tiny bit of red paint off, but it's not a problem. So we just move that up there, out the way. Get all this stuff out the way, dried off. And then it's on to the next step. Which, before I do that, I think we should be doing the window. And getting that in the pledge. And then, yeah, we do the window next, I think. dip, a little swill, tap off the excess, oh, a little ball, and 
try again. Tap off the excess. Plot all the rest of it off in each corner. And that's a big, nice little shiny job. So we just pop that in there, put the lid on, and we'll leave that overnight. But for you, it's a couple of seconds. Put it on, move this out the way, because I will knock it over. Get everything cleaned up on my way, so we can crack on. It's a good job my wife doesn't watch these videos and see me cleaning up like this. She'll have me doing all kinds around the house. Right, let's get the, um, the rotary tool out. These discs are bleeding lethal, I tell you. These little spikes on these rotary discs are awful. Awful. You see, this one's baldy. But I'm going to use it. I'm going to get my money's worth out of it because it's only a little tiny car and it won't take much. So this will probably be the last use of this wheel. But say, if you're going to use these wheels, make sure you put glasses on, safety goggles, and an apron of some sort because you, you end up finding the little spikes in your clothing for weeks after. And it's, it's awful, they're like really sharp little splinters of metal. And uh, they're not pleasant. So if you are going to use, just be aware. But we've actually, um, in a previous video, not in this because it was filmed after this one was, I found a little tip to actually uh, combat this issue. And basically all you do is you get yourself some super glue and run it round the actual disc itself around the centre on both sides, let it dry and then it'll seal in the little um, the little spikes, it seals them into the, the tool itself, into the bit I should say, and it, they do still come off, but we're like I was averaging one, one and a half cars per, per disc, I'm getting like five, six, seven cars before it's going baldy, so it's making it more cost effective and less dangerous to other speak with the, uh, the little missiles that fly away so if you are still using these and you, you are finding that the, the little bits are shooting out just let's say just have a little super bit of super glue around the circumference of the top and underneath and let it make sure you let it dry because if you put it in your dremel straight away and turn it on you end up with like a stream of candy floss of vaporized super glue and it looks like spiders web all over the place and it, it goes in your face little speckles of it goes up your arm and don't ask me how I know all that, but yeah, just let it dry first. That's all I'm gonna say on that. But anyway, yeah, that's a little tip for you. I hope it's, I hope it's useful and it makes the lifespan of your little bits last that little bit longer. So anyway, we're just cleaning up this car now, just get the remnants of the paint off and any blemishes, tarnishes, getting it ready for paint. And I've also, um, I've got some jewels for the little headlights and the rear lights on this one, little tiny jewels, like rhinestones. So they're gonna go on and just blink it up a tiny little bit. Just help it along a bit. We're just about done with this now. So it should be ready for paint. Yeah, the backing track to this um, this video, it, it's the only one I could sort of find in me little library I've got, which was sort of from that era of 50s. And it, it sort of reminds me of the cartoon, I don't know if anyone will remember it, but the old Top Cat, you know the cartoon, the little alley cats with like, like Barney and all them. It just, it, there's a little clip in the music, it just reminds me of Top Cat, it's crazy. So just like let, drop a little message in the comments if it like if it reminds you of Top Cat or if you can be remember Top Cat. Officer Dibble. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm babbling.
here usually i just like burnish half the car and do the rest off camera but with this being such a short video i thought i'd leave all of it in just to show you the process of how we do it all you know i know it's not rocket science and you've seen it all before so I'll just quickly go over this hood bonnet and then we'll be ready to go As you can see, the, this little bear bit, whatever you want to call it, rotary bit, is coming to the end of its life. There's bits all over me, bouncing off my glasses and everything, the goggles. So yeah, I don't, I don't know how to get past, past their quality control, these little things, because they're not at all safe. They're ridiculous. I've even tried the bigger ones, but they are a bit better, but... They still, um, they still lose little teeth. I don't even know what to call them, the spikes. They still lose them. If anything, you're better switching to the Scotch Bright discs. They're about the best things to use now I've found. They worked out about 10 pound sterling for their uh, four or five of them. You know, 13 dollars or something like that from Amazon or eBay. So anyway, that's all the grinding done. As you can see, baldy as a coot. Absolutely rubbish. With that, good riddance. <clears throat> so, anyway, she's all burnished. I'm just going to get the uh, quadruple zero wire wool. Just give it a quick once over with this. <clears throat> and so, if you haven't got a Dremel, <clears throat> excuse me, if you haven't got a Dremel or a rotary tool, this stuff actually does. An ideal job on its own you don't need really need a dremel so yeah you can do it the old-fashioned way with a bit of elbow grease and it does just a nice job see if anything I'd say it say it actually does a better job to be fair it's just a lot longer but I always go over it anyway with this and then I'll go over it with like a, um, a higher grade wire wool for the an extra shine and then I'll polish it up and rinse it off and get rid of all the grease and whatnot before it goes to paint. Yeah, I found I can become a bit obsessive with this, this process of the restorations. I just love doing it. I love any preparation work, spending as much time as I possibly can to get the best job I can out of it. And I like other well, people don't Matt, like doing it so much and they're not as aggressive with it, which is fine. If it works for them, it's fine. It's just, I just seem to prefer to do it to the best I can. Which sometimes takes quite a long time. It gets very monotonous, but it's all part of the hobby and the part I enjoy doing. So there we go, it's got a nice little shine right now. I, uh, I will carry on and do it a little bit more. But I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that bit in the video, to be fair. Because I don't want to bore you anymore. With all this um, polishing and what have you. I'll show you the good stuff. As I said, that's, that's the next step up I use. I basically just roll it into a ball and give it a quick... Not as hard, but a light buff. And it comes up really nice and shiny and glossy. It gets tangled now and again, but it's not too bad. And it doesn't scratch it at all. So 
So if you just treat it like a rag, roll it up into a ball, and then give it a good buff. And you, you really do see this, see this shimmer on it. So you can see now it is starting to go really well. I'll carry on with that in a little while. I'm off camera. So, anyway, next time you see it, we'll be in the paint. So, here we go. Right, so I'm just going to wrap, wrap down the little um, tack coat on this underside first. And then I'll, I'll do a little tack coat all the way around. And then what I'll do then is I'll, um, I'll let it dry for a little while. Off camera, I'll do the rest of the paint and then I'll bring it back once it's all ready to be revealed, detailed. So I'll show you a little bit of the process as I say, it's not special. It's a nice thin coat, nice and even. And just build up, build up your layers. Some people like to lay it down really thick and wet. But I, I, this is just my method. This is the way I do it, my process. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way of doing things. This is just the way that I've found easier for me. So we just leave that there. bonnet stroke hood give them a little once over inside outside upside whatever you want to call it as I say guys if you've enjoyed this video then please do leave a like comment and subscribe if you're not already if you are subscribed to the channel then thank you very much for returning and I appreciate you coming back week after week I do appreciate all my subscribers and welcome all the new ones and also check out the other the other guys who took the time to do this build off and um, I hope you enjoy this video and all the others that you see and hopefully I shall see you guys in the next one so I'm gonna leave this with you now and then I'm gonna reveal after we've showed you what we've started with and then um, I'll just let you enjoy the rest of the video without me yapping on so thank you very much for watching and i shall catch you in the next one and thank you to the three blind mice for this open invitational build i've enjoyed doing it and hopefully i shall be in the next one so thank you again guys have fun everyone I'll catch you in the next one stay safe bye bye